Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, Tutorialini Test Prep. Today we'll be going over Otocento number 4, Factoring. The goal of the Otocento course is to teach students everything they need to know about the digital SAT math exam. Please see the link in the description to download this video's worksheet for free. Let's get started. Okay everyone, so um, just be prepared. This is going to be a really long video. Um, so make sure you have a notebook, um, make sure that you pause the video to take thorough notes because I'm going to have a lot of examples on the slides for this one, which is a little bit different how I've done the videos in the past. And um, I would encourage you to, the second things start to make sense, just pause the video and try the examples yourself, even the ones that are on the slides and even the ones that are on the board. So just make sure you're pausing the video and uh, jotting this stuff down. Okay, so the very first thing we're going to talk about is the factoring puzzle. Um, that's what I like to call it. It's just when you are looking for a factor pair. So let's not even worry about um, any equations or anything. Let's just talk about how to kind of find the factor pair. So let's say we want to find two numbers that add to 8 and multiply to 15. So first thing I'm going to do is, is I'm going to brainstorm some factor pairs for 15. Well, the only ways I can get 15 are 1 times 15 and 3 times 5. Uh, next, I'm going to look at this chart. And um, you might want to copy this down. Um, basically, what this chart is saying is if the add is positive and the multiply is positive, both numbers are positive in your factor pair. If the add is negative and the multiply is positive, both numbers in your factor pair are negative. Now these next two can be a little confusing. Um, so if your add is negative and your multiply is negative, you have one positive and one negative, and then the star next to the negative just means that that number is quote unquote bigger. So the bigger number in magnitude is the negative number. And um, the bottom row is saying that if we have a positive add and a negative multiply, we have one negative, one positive, but the positive number is quote unquote bigger. So you can kind of, um, I'm just doing this to have something to look at while I talk. You should be able to figure this out using intuition, right? Like for example, the second row, oh, okay, to add to a negative, multiply to a positive, okay. Um, a negative times a negative gives me a positive, and then a negative plus a negative will also give me a negative. So hopefully you kind of have that intuition there. I'm just going to have this on the slides to make it easier. So um, for this one, we're both positive. So that's that's nice. It kind of makes it easier to, to brainstorm a little. And now um, I'm going to make a little cross here to kind of just visualize my work. This is like shorthand for um, your factoring puzzle when you're doing this on paper. Um, I Personally, I do this a little bit differently than other teachers, but I personally like to use A for add and M for multiply. And I like to put the adding number on top in red and the multiplying number on the bottom in blue. Um, so just do whatever works best for you. But uh, this is what I'm gonna be using for the rest of the video. So we try to come up with the two numbers and okay, well, one plus 15 gives me 16. But 5 plus 3 gives me 8. So the two numbers are 5 and 3. So we just write those there kind of horizontally. And the numbers kind of horizontally in the middle, those are the solution to our puzzle. So let's do another example. So we want to find two numbers that add to negative 4 and multiply to negative 21. So we're going to write down some factor pairs for 21. Well, the only ways to get 21 are 1 times 21 and... 3 times 7, and um, both the add and the multiply are negative, so we're going to have one negative number and one positive number. So, so the signs differ, so they're going to kind of fight. So I'm going to try to look for a factor pair that has a difference of whatever the add is, 4. So 21 minus 1, that's a difference of like 20, that's not going to work. 3 times 7, oh that's a difference of like 4. Um, so, so I think that'll work. Um, and remember, we have to make the smaller number. We have to make the smaller number 
positive and the bigger number negative. So negative seven and three. And those are our two numbers. Great, let's do another one. So we're gonna add to two and we're going to multiply to negative 24. So um, we're gonna have to brainstorm a little bit more because there's more factors for 24, right? So we could get one times 24, we could get two times 12, we could get three times eight, or we could get four times six. So um, we've got a positive add and a negative multiply. So we are in the bottom row. So we're gonna have two kind of competing numbers, two different signs competing. They're gonna fight each other, right? Tug of war. And the positive number is gonna be quote unquote bigger and the negative number will be smaller. So they should have a difference of about two. Well, um, the only ones with a difference of about two are four, four times six. So we're gonna do six and then negative four. And once you do this enough times, guys, you just you just need to practice this a lot. Go on Khan Academy, etc. Um, once you do this a lot of times, 50, 100 times, you start to be able to do it in your head without much thinking. Anyway, I think one final one left. So let's see. Add to negative 11, multiply to 18. So um, the ways to get 18 are 1 times 18, 2 times 9, and 3 times 6. Um, we're going to be in the second row on the chart. So they're both negative. So they're going to kind of like synthesize. They're going to work together. So what numbers form a sum of 11? Well, the only ones that do that are two and nine. So they're both negative. So it should be negative two and negative nine. So that's kind of the thought process there. And you guys have probably seen this before. Just pay close attention to the way I wrote this down kind of in the bottom right hand corner because I'm going to be doing that a lot through the rest of the video. Okay, so skill number one is factoring quadratics with A equals one. This is easily one of the most commonly tested things on the SAT. Um, uh, so let's say we have, um, so A equals one meaning the, the A, which is normally in front of X squared, is one, so there's kind of nothing there. The implied coefficient is one. We don't have to write anything there. So um, for this one, we need to come up, we're gonna first put up some, some teachers call these earmuffs. Um, we're just gonna set some parentheses and we're gonna put X in the front seat because X times X is X squared, which is our first term. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to come up with two numbers that add to whatever B is, in this case, positive five, and multiply to whatever six it, to whatever C is, in this case, positive six. So um, we're gonna set up our little cross, and we have to come up with two numbers that add to five and multiply six. Those are two and three. So now we put those numbers with their sign in the empty blanks. So we have positive two and positive three, so we're gonna write X plus two and X plus three. So that is our factored form. Let's do a couple more. So um, we want to add, set up our parentheses, and then we want to add to negative four. And notice how I include the sign. Lots of people forget to include the sign. So if it's negative, you gotta keep it a negative number. And they have to multiply to three. So let's put that in our little chart here. And Let's see, two numbers that add to negative four and multiply to three. Well, the only way to get three is one times three. Um, so I think it has to be negative one and negative three. And that's right. So now we're gonna put those in our empty, empty kind of rightmost seats. And so that'll give us X minus three times X minus one. Great, let's do another one. So let's see, we want to for this one, we want to, of course, set up our parentheses and we want to add to negative eight and multiply to negative 20, put it in the chart. Let's see, they're, they're both negative. Uh, if I have a negative product, I have to have one positive, one negative. Pretty sure it's negative 10 and two, let's see. Great, 
So now we put those in our parentheses and our factors are x minus 10 and x plus 2. So this is super important, guys. You want to be able to make sure you know how to do this, like the back of your hand going into, into your tests. Okay, here's another really important one. Um, factoring out the GCF. So GCF just stands for greatest common factor. So let's say we have this guy. And we want to try to figure out the greatest common factor so that we can pull it out. So um, I'm only going to go through this once. Um, there's plenty of videos you can watch on YouTube. Go over this in more detail. Um, I'm going to break each of these terms, the 6x cubed and the 18x squared, into their prime factorization. So let's do the, the number 6 first. So 6 can be broken up into 2 times 3. That's it. I can't break up 2 or 3 any further. 18, there's a couple ways you could break up 18, but why don't I start with 6 times 3? And then the 6 can be broken up again into 2 times 3. And we just pull down that 3 from before. So 6 has a factorization of 2 times 3. And 18 has a factorization of 2 times 3 times 3. So 6x cubed is 2 times 3 and then 3x's. x times x times x. And um, 18x squared is 2 times 3 times 3 and then x to the power of 2. So that's 2x's. 2 times 3 times 3 times x times x. Now to find the greatest common factor, we circle all the pairs that they have in common. So, um, they, have a, they have a 2, they both have a 2, they both have a 3, they both have an x, and they both have a second x. So, um, what we're going to do to find our GCF is we're going to take 1 from each of those pairs. So, 2 times 3 times x times x, 1 of each of those kind of shared factors. And we multiply those together, 2 times 3 is 6, x times x is x squared. So the GCF is 6x squared. Now we are going to pull that 6x squared out in front, and we're going to leave a parenthesis kind of to the right of it. And to figure out what's left in that parenthesis from what we pulled out, well, you know, 6x squared with a parenthesis, that's multiplication. So we're going to do the opposite of multiplication which is division. We're kind of basic we're basically going to do the, the reverse of the distributive property. So we're going to divide both of these terms by 6x squared. So um 6 divided by 6 that's just 1, x cubed divided by x squared that's just 3 minus 2 is x to the 1. So so x and the right term will be 18 divided by 6 is 3 and the x squared go where? So it should be x plus 3. So the factored form is 6x squared times x plus 3. So you actually see um, kind of the um, variable factor maybe isn't that bad to come up with. Um, you kind of just have to think, OK, if they both have an x, what's the greatest power of x that they both have? OK, well, the greatest power that all the terms have is 2, right? So they don't both have 3. They both have at least 2. So um, x squared would kind of be the variable component of the factor. And then if you have, this one isn't so bad, but if you have messier numbers and you have a harder time coming up with the, G, the numerical part of the GCF, you can actually just use Desmos. So um, there's a function. Not a lot of people know about this. Um, it's called the GCD function. So if you type in, which stands for greatest common divisor, divisor and factor mean the same thing. For the most part. So GCD, I put parentheses and then 6, 18. You see it tells me the GCD or GCF is 6, which is what we got, 6x squared, right? 6. And you're like, mm, maybe that's not too helpful. But if you see in the example I put, if you did GCD of like 26, 39, 117, maybe where there was like more numbers or they were bigger, they were like harder to see, you could see where maybe that function could really come in handy. Um, instead of just guessing and checking and dividing on your calculator a bunch of times, you can actually just use this function. It's, it's really helpful. So, so uh, that's what I'm going to just use for the rest of the video for this part. Great, let's do another one. So um, we're first going to figure out the GCF of uh, 
27 and 45. And hopefully you know your times tables well enough to see this, but it is nine. And now we need to come up with the least power. Let's first ask ourselves, do they both have an X? Well, they do both have an X and they both have at least X to the power of three. So we're gonna pull out an X to the power of three and they both have a Y and they both have at least Y to the one or just Y. So we're gonna pull out a Y. Uh, so our GCF is nine X cubed Y. So we pull that out. And now we're going to divide both terms by what we pulled out, being very careful to make sure we include any negative signs. And 27 divided by nine is three. X to the fifth over X cubed is X squared. The Y's cancel. So that part should be three X squared. And then for the other part, 45 over nine is five. The X cubes cancel and we um, y to the seventh over y, seven minus one, six. So that's y to the six. So that should be five y to the six. So our factored form is nine x cubed y, three x squared minus five y to the six. And it's always good guys before you move on. Cause sometimes we, sometimes we, we don't, on accident, we don't pick out the greatest common factor, right? So it's always good to just do like a final check just to make sure there's no common factors left in the thing that you did. So I'm just going to look, I'm going to like, 3x squared minus 5y. Did they both have um, an x? No. Um, did they both have a y? No. Uh, did they both have a factor of 3? No. Did they both have a factor of 5? No. So I did a good job. I must have pulled out, as long as I did the division correctly, I must have pulled out the correct greatest common factor. So that looks good. Okay, let's see. So here's another one. Um, you'll see questions like this all the time on the SAT where you have to factor out a GCF and um, then do some other type of factoring. So, so you see here, it's like, oh, this kind of looks like what we were doing before, but we have this pesky three out in front. And, and if possible, we'd really like to get rid of that, th rid of that three, take him out. Well, fortunately, all three of these terms are divisible by three. Um, they don't all have an X, but they all have a factor of three. So the GCF is three. So we're gonna pull out a three divide every term by three, and we are left with three times x squared plus four x minus 12. Oh, great. So now that we have a one in front of the x squared, we can factor with a equals one, just like we were doing before. So we wanna add to four and multiply to negative 12, put that in our chart. And we're gonna see, um, try to brainstorm the numbers. Uh, I think it's six and negative two. Hopefully that's right. Good, and we write that as x plus six, x minus two. So just don't forget that stuff that's already been pulled out, you gotta pull it down with you, right? So that lots of people would have forgotten to write that three in the final line of their work, but you gotta, you gotta pull that down. So don't forget any other factors that are just kind of off to the side, you still gotta write them in your final answer. Okay, great. Okay, skill number three is factoring by grouping. Now, um, and, and this occurs when you have four terms with no greatest common factor. You're not gonna see this on its own a lot on the SAT, but um, the thing that we're about to do, kinda, which is more important, kinda has this as a prerequisite. So I'm gonna try to quickly go over it. Um, so we see we have four terms and there's no greatest common factor for all of them. It feels like there is, but but there isn't. If you think, if you look carefully, see how not all four terms have an x, and not all four terms have a five, not all four terms have a two. So, um, so there really is no greatest common factor. So this is a really strong candidate for grouping. So um, what we're going to do is we're first going to group. So we group the first two together, and the second two together. You can put parentheses around it, but I, I don't know, I've always just found it easier to just underline. Um, I know it's easier for me because I use colored, you know, pens and stuff at the whiteboard. Um, I know you guys can't do that on your exam. You got to use a pencil for your scratch work. So just do whatever's easier. If you want to put parentheses, that's fine. Um, now we factor each of these pairs separately using a GCF. 
So um, the greatest common factor of the blue is 5x squared. So I'm going to pull that out and then do just like we were doing before, divide. And we're left with x plus 5. Now the second one, the GCF, is 2. And we are once again left with x plus 5, and that is good. We want them to be the same. See how those two are the same? That's supposed to happen. If you didn't get the same thing, you either made a mistake or perhaps you just need to change the sign of what you're pulling out. So maybe instead of pulling out 2, we could have pulled out negative 2. Now, you can kind of see with this one, uh, Kyle, it's all positive numbers. Like, I, I know I need to pull out positive 2, but you're going to get more challenging ones where there's like negatives and stuff, and it's not going to be as clear if you need to pull out a positive or a negative. So as a kind of a last resort, just change the sign of the thing you're pulling out of that second one. Okay, so now we're going to combine. So pay very close attention to this. So the kind of coefficients of those two x plus 5s, that's our first factor, 5x squared plus 2. We kind of smush those together to make a factor. And then the repeat factor, which in this case is x plus 5, that's our second factor. So the factored form of this problem is 5x squared plus 2 times x plus 5. Great, let's keep going. Okay, so here's another one. You see there's some negative signs involved, so this is probably going to be a little bit more of a pain. Uh, first, we're going to group. Next, we're going to factor each using a GCF. So the greatest common factor of the first one is x squared. We're left with x minus 4. And now here I'm like, okay, they don't both have an x, but should I pull out negative 5 or positive 5? And I'm going to go out on a limb here, on a whim here, and say that I think I should pull out negative 5 because I want a positive x. And if we divide both those by negative 5, we get x minus 4. And that is good. So we did a good job. So they match, right? So that is good. We don't need to change anything. Um, just again, be careful. Lots of people doing this, they maybe would have pulled out positive 5. Um, once you realize that that did not work, just try, just kind of erase that part and then change the negative 5, change the positive 5 to a negative 5, and then you'll see that that gives you the correct factorization. So now we're going to combine. So those guys in front, those form one of our factors, so x squared minus 5. And the other factor is our repeat, which is x minus 4. So the factored form is x squared minus 5 times x minus 4. Great, let's keep going. Now we're going to talk about factoring quadratics using the AC method. This is what you do when a is not equal to 1. So um, as you can see here, this one I have a 2 in front. And we would love to pull out that 2 just like we were doing before, right? But unfortunately, the 7 is not divisible by 2. So that's what tells us we have to do AC method. So here's the AC method. First, we are going to identify A, B, and C. Next, we are going to do a factoring puzzle. But we're going to find two numbers that add to B, just like before, but then with a slight difference, we have to find two numbers that multiply to a times c. a times c. Hence the name, AC method. So um, just think like multiply times a times c. Oh, so it has to times to a times c. And it's called the AC method. So if you remember the name, you won't forget that they have to multiply to AC. So I'm going to put that in the chart here. So B is going to go on top, and then A times C is going to go on the bottom. Then we're going to split the BX term into those two numbers that we found. And finally, once we do all that setup, we just do factoring by grouping just like we did before. So this is, this is just long. So it's, it's just really easy to make a tiny careless mistake. 
But unfortunately, this does show up once in a while on the SAT, so you got to know it. So let's see here. First, we're going to identify A, B, and C. So let me hold up AX squared plus BX plus C, and I'm going to be very careful to not forget any negative signs. So A is 2, B is positive 7, and C is negative 4. Lots of people would have forgot that negative on the 4, and right away they would have gone to do all this work, and it would have been wrong right from the get-go. So just make sure that you include the signs. Okay, next uh, we're going to do our factoring puzzle. So we want them to add to B, but multiply to A times C. Okay, A is 2, C is negative 4. So A times C is 2 times negative 4, which is negative 8. So now we come up with the two numbers. I believe they're 8 and negative 1. Next, we're going to split the BX term into those two numbers. So what the heck does that mean? So we're just going to take that 7X, and we're going to break it up into whatever those two numbers are, but just with Xs slapped on them. So, so we're going to write 2X squared plus 8X minus 1X minus 4. So see how the 7X just got transformed into 8X minus 1X? That's because those are the two numbers we came up with. And we don't write 1x, we just write x. So I'm just going to rewrite that with just that one tiny change. And we're good to go. So now on the next slide, we're going to take that uh, polynomial and we're going to do factoring by grouping, just like before. Okay, so we're going to group. Next, we're going to do GCF. So 2x, x plus 4. And then the other one, uh, I'm going to pull out. You're like, oh, they don't share a common factor. Well, when that happens, you have to pull out, for AC method, you have to pull out, or grouping in general, you have to pull out either a 1 or a negative 1. So here I'm going to pull out a negative 1. And if I divide both those by negative 1, it gives me x plus 4. And again, once again, guys, it's, if, you, if you pulled out 1, um, the just remember to change it to negative one when it inevitably does not give you the same thing. So just just remember if if you don't quite see it, just you got a fifty. Once you figure out that common factor, you get a fifty-fifty chance of guessing the sign right. So um, try to develop that intuition. But even if you can't, you can erase it and fix it. Um, also, it's not really technically right to write one as a coefficient, but I'm going to do it here just for the sake of making the factorization more clear. So um, our first factor is 2x minus 1. And our second factor is our repeat, which is x plus 4. That is it. That is the AC method. OK, let's do it for this guy. So we're going to identify ABC. And we have a equals 5, b equals 19, c equals 12, all positive. We're going to do our factoring puzzle, so they have to add to 19 and multiply to a times c, so 5 times 12, which is 60. And now we come up with the two numbers, and you're going to see with these problems, guys, oftentimes the numbers get really big, so this is kind of hard to come up with. Um, but the two numbers are uh, 15 and 4. Now we're going to split the bx term into the two numbers, so that 19x is going to get split up into 4x and 15x. And now we're going to take it to the next slide and do factoring by grouping. OK, so um, first we're going to group, pull out a GCF. So I think, oh, by the way, guys, I meant to say this before. The order you put the 4x and the 15x in doesn't matter. It does not matter. You could put the 4x first, or you could put the 15x first. It doesn't matter. You can try it both ways. It's going to work out the exact same. I actually intuitively would have put the 15x next to the 5x squared just because that's how my mind is arranged to think. I think, oh, 5 and 15 go together. But I deliberately put the one that doesn't feel like it goes with it next to the 5x squared 
just to kind of show you while making this, just to kind of show you guys that point that it doesn't matter where you put them. Okay, so um, we're gonna group. Um, I think the only GCF in the first one is X. So we pull that out and we're left with five X plus four. And next we see, I think the only one over there is three. And we are again left with, when you divide both those by three, you're left with five X plus four. And again, just remember, just be careful pulling, pulling that guy out. And our first factor is X plus three. And our second factor is the repeat, which is five X plus four. Um, so yeah, that is the AC method. Um, this is tricky. So definitely take some time to practice this. Um, I don't think I fully understood this until I was an adult teacher. So um, I'm sure many, many, many people don't feel bad if you don't, if you didn't understand this the first time you learned it. Um, I don't think I did either. So, so no judgment there. All right. Um, okay. Let's go and do just a few more examples back at the whiteboard. Okay, let's get started here. So, um, uh, so our very first thing is we want to add to two, and this is factoring with a equals one, and we want to multiply to negative thirty-five. So. Our two numbers are, let me see here, seven and negative five. Before I move on, let's just do a quick final check. Seven plus negative five, does that give me two? Yep, seven times negative five, that gives me negative 35. Looks good. Okay, so now we're gonna do X, put those in here, so X plus seven, x minus five. So that is the factored form of the first example. Okay, so for this guy, um, very first thing before I do anything, I'm gonna try to see if I can pull out a GCF. So um, the GCF, let's see, um, they all have an x. Um, they all have at least x to the one. So the lowest, the greatest power of X that they all have is X to the one. So we've got an X and all these numbers are divisible by two. So the GCF is two X. So we're gonna pull out a two X and let me leave some room here. Once again, we're gonna divide everything by 2x. So let's see what that gives us. Um, x squared plus 15x plus 50. And we go, oh, okay, that looks really nice. Now we can do factoring with a equals one. So let's make another little cross over here. And we want to add to positive 15 and multiply to positive 50. And set up some parentheses here. And now we just gotta come up with the two numbers. So multiply to 50, 10 and five. 10 times five is 50 and then 10 plus five is 15. So we put X plus 10 and X plus five. So that is the factor form for that example, two X times X plus 10 times X plus five. Great, let's look at the third one. So we're gonna pull out a GCF, um, the GCF of eight and 20 is they both have two 
but they both also have four. So we're going to pull out four. They both have x's. The highest power of x that they both have is x to the fourth. So we're going to pull out an x to the fourth. And the highest power of y that they both have is y to the third. So we're going to pull out 4x to the fourth, y to the third. And we are going to divide both these terms by that. Okay, so we get 2. This guy goes away. And x to the ninth divided by x to the fourth. When we divide by common base, we subtract the exponents. So that's x to the five. And then negative 20 by four, that's minus five. The x to the fourths go away. And y to the fifth divided by y to the third is y squared. Okay, so I think that's the factored form. There's, there, just do a quick final check. Is there anything else we can pull out? Uh, they both don't have x, they don't both have y, and they don't both have a 2, they both don't have a 5. Nothing we can do there. No, no common factors whatsoever. So as long as we didn't make a mistake with our division, it, it seems like we did a good job. Great. And the last one. Okay, so in a perfect world, I would pull out um, that 3, but neither 8 nor 4 are divisible by 3. So unfortunately, we roll our eyes and we have to do the AC method. So um, they have to add to, so first I'm going to do A is 3, B is negative 8, and C is 4. So they have to add to B, which is negative 8, and they have to multiply to um, a times C, which is 3 times 4, that is 12. Okay, so, so now we have to think of the two numbers. So, I think it's negative 6 and negative 2. So those multiply to 12 and add to negative 8. Looks good. Now we're going to split the BX term into the two numbers. So we get 3x squared minus 6x. Doesn't matter the order you put them in as long as they're both in the middle. Minus 2x plus 4. And uh, now we do factor by grouping. So let's see here. Um, this is a common factor of 3x. And we're left with x minus 2. Let me just double check real quick. 3x times x is x squared. Good. 3x times negative 2 is negative 6x. Good. And now I'm like, hmm, I could pull out a 2 or a negative 2. I want a positive x. So how about I pull out a negative 2? And we're left with x and then um, 4 divided by negative 2 is negative 2. So we're going to do x minus 2. Okay. That is looking really good. Right, we got the same thing. So now we just have to kind of um, Frankenstein our factors together. So this is 3x minus 2. And then the repeat. Is x minus 2. So the factored form is 3x minus 2 times x minus 2. All right, let's go back to the slides. OK, so the next skill, and I haven't seen this in quite a while, but I, I felt for the, the sake of being thorough, I, I needed to mention this. So this is called factoring perfect square trinomials. Um, these are the two perfect square trinomials. A plus B squared equals A squared plus 2AB plus B squared. And A minus B squared equals A squared minus 2AB plus B squared. 
Um, unfortunately, to do these problems efficiently in a standardized testing setting, you have to memorize these. So you probably want to know these by heart. All right, let's go over the process. So um, I, I want to point out, guys, you know, we can just do this one using factoring with A equals one. Like before, this isn't meant to be a good example of when to use factoring perfect square trinomials. This is just meant to be like an introductory so you can kind of follow along, right? So don't, we're going to do more complex ones in a minute where this is more appropriate. Anyway, so first we're going to hold up the equation. So right away I'm like, hmm, I have perfect squares at the, in the front and at the end, and I've got two plus signs. So that seems to line up with the a plus b squared equation. So we hold that up. And next we try to identify a and b. So, um, so if a squared is equal to x squared, the square root of x squared is x. So that means a is equal to x. And if 64 is equal to b squared, that means the um, b is the square root of 64. So the square root of 64 is 8. So b is 8. And now we're going to check to the middle term to, to just be certain that it is indeed a perfect square trinomial. So the middle term is 2ab. So 2 times x times 8 equals 16x. Ah, okay, there's a 16x in the middle, so that's good. So this is a perfect square trinomial, so we can use this equation. So now all we do is we just put our a and our b in into a plus b squared. So instead of a plus b squared, we're going to write x plus 8 squared because a is x and b is 8. And again, you could have figured that out for this one just by using factoring with a equals 1. But let's do a more challenging one now. Okay, so you see this guy, it's like, oh, okay, we can't do this quite so simply like with the other ones, like with that one we just did. So, um... For this one, I'm like, oh, I got perfect squares at the front and at the end. So, so that is looking good. And, um, but this time I see a minus and a plus. So that tells me, okay, the minus sign in front of that 20 tells me that I should be using the a minus b squared equation because there's a minus in that equation. And now we're going to identify a and b just like before. So a squared is equal to 4x squared now. This is the part that really people tend to mess up on. You have to square root the whole term. So you have to square root the, the 4 and the x squared. So the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of x squared is x. Little tidbit, um, you can quickly square root a variable with an exponent just by dividing the exponent by 2. So x squared, 2 divided by 2 is 1. x to the 1 is just x. Um, so, a is, so a is 2x. And we can do kind of a similar thing with the guy on the right. So if b squared is 25y squared, we have to square root both of them. Square root the whole thing. So it's 5, and then the square root of y squared is y. So b is 5y. Now it's just like before. Um, we check the metal term, which is 2ab. So we do 2 times 2x times 5y, which gives us 20xy, which is what we got for the middle term. So that looks really, really good. So now we can, this is indeed a perfect square trinomial, and we can use the formula. So um, uh, we're going to plug in, and instead of a minus b squared, we're going to write 2x minus 5y squared. And that is our factored form for this guy. All right, moving on. This one is way more important for the SAT. Factoring difference of two squares. Once again, this is not on the formula sheet. And to figure this out in a um, fast-paced standardized testing situation, you're going to want to memorize it. You're going to see me once in a while. Um, I learned this from another teacher. Um, there's an act that the, the abbreviation for difference of two squares. Lots of people say dots, D O T S, difference of two squares. Um, so just make sure you memorize this. This will sneak up on you. It's it's usually featured in 
once every test or two. And essential to being able to recognize this when this is at play is having your perfect squares memorized. So I would do, try really, really hard to have your perfect squares from 1 to 144 memorized. So the first 12, definitely make sure you know those by heart. Otherwise, these are this is going to be really hard to do. All right. So let's do a couple basic problems. So x squared minus 9. Okay, x squared, that's a square. It's literally got a 2, right? It's got a square. 9, that's a perfect square, and I got a minus sign. Oh, so this looks like a difference of two squares. So I'm going to show you guys how to rewrite it. So it's x to the power of 2 minus whatever the square root of 9 is, 3 to the power of 2. Now you kind of see, oh, a is x and b is 3, and you can put it into the equation. a plus b, a minus b. So this is x plus 3, x minus 3. Um, you can probably start to see what's going on here. So you don't have to write it out necessarily. Just um, just trying to show you guys what's going on. So for x squared minus 25, that's x squared minus 5 squared. So we can write that as x plus 5, x minus 5. Hopefully you're starting to see the pattern, and maybe you can start to do this without writing it out. So x squared minus 49, square root of 49 is 7. So that's x plus 7 times x minus 7. And let's do the last one without writing it out. So x squared minus 64. The square root of 64 is 8. So the factored form for that is x plus 8 times x minus 8. Great. So um, you might once in a while have to do exactly what we just did on terms that are not perfect squares. Um, we'll, we'll go over why in a little bit, but um, basically what you do is once again, you take the square root of both of them and that's your A and your B. So A is X and B is square root of 51 and there's no way to simplify square root of 51. So we just leave it as square root of 51. If there was a way to simplify it, you would simplify it first, then put it into a plus b, a minus b. So x squared minus 51, one way we could write that is x plus root 51, x minus root 51. x squared minus 23, same kind of deal. We could write it like this, and then the factored form becomes x plus root 23, x minus root 23. Hopefully you're starting to see the pattern. x squared minus 2. That's x squared minus root 2 squared. Can't simplify that, so we just leave it as root 2. That's x plus root 2, x minus root 2. And x squared minus 17. Can't simplify root 17. So that is x plus root 17, x minus root 17. So why and how the heck would we know, how do we know when to do this? Um, there's an example on the whiteboard that I'll show you guys later. Um, that was on a past exam where you had to do this. So I'll show you an example. It's just, just covering my bases here. Not sure how, this isn't super important, but it's worth mentioning. All right, so this is complex, but I would say this is maybe something you're a little bit more likely to run into. You never know. Um, so um, once again, just like when we did the perfect square trinomials, you just gotta remember to take the square root of the whole kind of term. So it's not 6x squared is the square root, it's 6x. And then the square root of 1 is just 1. Now we put that into our formula, 6x plus 1, 6x minus 1. And for this one, it's not 7x squared, it's 7x and 5y are the square roots. And we put it into the equation, so a plus b, a minus b, so that's 7x plus 5y times 7x minus 5y. And now for the last one, again, remember guys, little trick when you're square rooting a variable is to just divide the exponent by 2, okay? So the first one is going to be 9, and then 4 divided by 2, x squared. And the second one is going to be 8 
6 divided by 2, y to the third. So now we put that into the equation. So that is 9x squared plus 8y cubed times 9x squared minus 8y cubed. Great. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Let's keep going. Uh, so you might come across a problem where you have to use difference of two squares more than once. So let's go over one right now. So 16x to the fourth minus 81. So, oh, that's a difference of two squares. So I'm going to break that up into with an a of 4x squared and a b of 9. So it becomes 4x squared plus 9 and 4x squared minus 9. But I noticed that that guy on the right has a minus sign, and I still have two perfect squares, 4x squared and 9. So he can be broken up again. So that guy has a equals square root of 4x squared, 2x, and b equals square root of 9, which is 3. So we can break him up into 2x plus 3, 2x minus 3. And of course, if you have another factor just sitting there, we have to pull him down and keep him in our final answer. So don't forget to just keep writing whatever remaining factors you have. So sometimes you have to do this more than once. So always look for different types of factoring before you stop. Okay, next, skill seven, we have factoring in quadratic form. Some people call these hidden quadratics. So, um, uh, we could use the top one, but almost always when you do this, you can either, the A is either one or you can pull it out. So um, I like to write it like this, x to the 2n plus bx to the n plus c. So um, notice that the, um, the it looks just like ax squared plus bx plus c, but we have a different exponent n and then the exponent of the leading term is double that. That two just means it's double. Um, I also really like to underline this guy in the middle, not the B, but the X to the N. Um, we'll go over why that is in a minute, but please do that in your notes. All right, so um, we have X to the 10 plus 11 X to the five plus 30. So the proper way to do this is to make a substitution of whatever that middle guy is, x to the 5. So I'm going to substitute y. You could use whatever letter you want. You could use t. You could use u. And um, y is x to the 5th. So we put a y where the x to the 5th is. And then x to the 5th squared, 5 times 2 is 10. So x to the 5th squared is x to the 10. So that would be y squared. So we have y squared plus 11y plus 30. And now, oh, that's just factoring with a equals 1. So we just do what we did before. It's got to add to 11, multiply to 30. The two numbers are 6 and 5. So that gives us y plus 6, y plus 5. And just don't forget at the end to change it back. So turn the x, the y's back into x to the fifth. So x to the 5 plus 6, x to the 5 plus 5. That's our factored form. So, um... You might be thinking, but Kyle, that's just factoring with a equals 1 with extra steps. And you're right, it is. So you can kind of skip over the substitution if you kind of mentally replace it, at least for ones that look like this. So um, you can underline that x to the 5 and then just do a equals 1, but make your earmuffs have x to the fives instead of x's. So when we do the next example, that's how we're going to do it. So instead of putting x in our front seats, we're going to put whatever x to the n is. So I see a problem right away. I'm like, OK, I see that the, that six and that three, the six is double three. So right away, this is a this is a factoring in quadratic form question. And I'm immediately going to underline x to the third. Now I'm going to make parentheses with x to the third in the front seat and nothing in the next seat. And now we do our factoring puzzle. So it's got to add to 2 and multiply to negative 24. The two numbers are 6 and negative 4. So I put those in, x cubed plus 6, x cubed minus 4. 
see that was much faster now that you know what to do it's it's not so bad it's literally almost exactly the same thing we were doing at the very beginning of the video factoring with a equals one it's just instead of writing x we put x cubed all right and again always look for other types of factoring before you stop you are not done until you literally cannot factor it any further so um we have x to the fourth plus 3x squared minus 28 okay the exponents are double this is quadratic form so i'm um, going to underline that middle guy and the uh, they're going to add to 3, multiply to negative 28. Two numbers should be 7 and negative 4. So I'm going to write x squared plus 7 and x squared minus 4. But now, oh, wait a second. I see a minus sign and I see two perfect squares. That is a difference of two squares. So we can break that up just like we were doing before. And he becomes x plus 2, x minus 2. But just don't forget, we pull down that x squared plus 7. So always, always, always look for other types of factoring before you call it quits. You are not done until it cannot be factored any further. Great. Skill number 8. I, I don't know if this is really a factoring concept, but it's definitely closer related, and it's worth putting here, I think. Um, skill number 8, this is called the... for Everything we've been doing up to this point has just been expressions, meaning no equal sign. Equations, things with equal sign, um, oftentimes you have to get all the terms to one side and then set it equal to zero and factor to solve the equation. So um, let's quickly go over the zero product property. So what the heck is that? So the zero product property basically tells us that no matter if we're multiplying a bunch of stuff together, no matter how big or small or positive or negative those other numbers are, if one of them is zero, the whole thing is zero. Anything times zero is equal to zero. So it doesn't matter how messy those other numbers are. As long as one of them is zero, the whole thing is zero. That's the zero product property. And see, even when we have exponents, the exponent of the zero doesn't matter. All we care about is that that base is zero. So let's look at this problem. So we're going to look at each one of these factors and see if we can find any values of x that makes them 0. 5 can never be 0, right? It can't. It just can't. So we don't need to worry about 5. But x minus 3 and x plus 8 can be 0. So what we're going to do is we're going to take each of those factors and write an equation where they are equal to 0. So x minus 3 equals 0, and x plus 8 equals 0, and then we solve. So for x minus 3, we're going to add 3 to both sides, and we get x equals 3. And for x plus 8, we get x equals negative 8 after we subtract 8 from both sides. So now you might be wondering, Kyle, okay, that was, ob that was maybe obvious to me. Um, why are you going over this? And here's the problem, right? When you do the easy ones, you do it in your head. So you forget the mechanics of what you're doing when a harder one comes along like this. So if you do it in your head constantly, you're not going to be able to um, do a harder question that requires you to actually understand um, the mechanics of what you're doing. So let's look at this one. So. We're going to look at each factor, and we only care about the bases of the factor. We don't care about the exponents. So the factors are x, 2x plus 5, and 3x minus 2. So we're going to write equations where we set each of those equal to 0. Well, the first one, x equals 0. Oh, great. Wow. It's already by itself. We're done. x equals 0 is one of the solutions. This is like... Don't forget to put that, guys. I, I don't know what it is, but everyone thinks when I ask them what value, when they're stuck on the solution for that factor, I go, what value of x makes x 0? And they think it's a trick question. They tell me like 1 or 2 or 3 or something. No, it's 0. It's not, it's not a trick question. Just think, like, what makes x 0? It's just, it's just 0. So 
don't don't forget that if you have an X or something out in front, that that's probably going to add a solution of zero. So don't forget to include that. Okay, so now we do the middle one, 2x plus 5 equals 0. First, I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides, and I get 2x equals negative 5. Next, I'm going to divide both sides by 2, and I get x equals negative 5 halves. For the third one, we're going to do 3x minus 2 equals 0. First thing we're going to do is add 2 to both sides, and we get 3x equals 2. And now we're going to divide both sides by 3, and we get x equals 2 thirds. Great, so hopefully that clears things up. Okay, let's do a couple more examples together at the whiteboard. Okay, we're back. So this first one, um, this looks like a perfect square trinomial. Um, I see two plus signs. So I'm thinking that is going to be a plus b squared. So a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So a squared, b squared. So a is, square root of 81 is 9. Square root of x to the fourth divided by 2, that's x squared. b is, let's see, um, 7. And then 6 divided by 2 is so that's y cubed. And now we're just going to quickly, I'll just do this off to the side. We're going to check the middle term. So 2ab equals 2 9x squared times 7y cubed. 2 times 9 times 7 is 126. And then x squared y cubed. So... Just got to check this part. This guy is all good. So the middle term is good. So it is indeed a perfect square trinomial. So we can write it using a plus b squared. So this is 9x squared plus 7y cubed squared. Great. Let's keep going. Okay, so this is the pain problem I was talking about. So I'm kind of looking at this, and it's kind of reminding me of that stuff we were doing before. So, so why don't I change this guy into a perfect of two, a difference of two squares, even though um, I wouldn't do that normally. Uh, so let's do x plus root 29 and x minus root 29. Everything else stays the same. And you see, oh, we got the same thing on both sides. So we can get rid of that guy. And we are just left with x minus root 29 over x minus 5, which is the answer. So you can see, right, in the heat of the moment, many people wouldn't have thought to do that on the exam. So that can be really tricky. I don't know, just kind of worth talking about. Okay, this guy, this I see double exponents so and a constant. So this is a factoring quadratic form problem. So the very first thing I'm going to do is underline this guy. And I'm going to set up my, my parentheses, but instead of x's, I'm going to put x squared. Uh, now I'm going to do my factoring puzzle. So they have to add to negative 23 and they have to multiply to negative 50. And it's two numbers. Um, what are those two numbers? Let me see. Okay, great. It's 
negative 25 and 2. So I can write this as x squared minus 25 and x squared plus 2. But wait a second, once again, I see a difference of two squares. So this one we can break up further, and that is x plus 5 x minus 5, and then don't forget to pull this guy down. That's x squared plus 2. So this is x plus 5 x minus 5 times x squared plus 2. Okay, great. All right, this one we're going to use the zero product property. So let's um, highlight all the factors. Um, 5 can never be 0, so I'm not worried about him. Um, we have x, we have x plus 3, we have 7x minus 4, and we have 8x plus 1. And again, this only works, guys, if the other side is equal to 0. It is, so we are all good. So they have to all be multiplied together, and the other side has to be equal to 0. Zero product property. Product means multiply. Other side has to be 0. Okay, so let's go over each of these. So this is just x equals 0, so that's one of our solutions. This one is x plus 3 equals 0. We subtract 3 from both sides, and we get x equals negative 3, so that's one of our solutions. This one is just 7x minus 4 equals 0. We add 4 to both sides, and we get 7x equals 4. Then we divide by 7, and we get x equals 4 sevenths. Okay, next for this guy, we're going to do 8x plus 1 equals 0. Subtract 1 from both sides, we get 8x equals negative 1. And we divide both sides by 8, and we get x equals negative 1 over 8. And that is one of our solutions too. So we have four solutions to this equation. 0, negative 3, 4 sevenths, and negative 1 eighth. All right, let's go back to the slides. Okay, so really quick, I want to give some important advice on factoring. So you always have to start by checking to see if you can pull out a GCF. That's always the first thing you should try to do. That's a common theme here. Always pull out a GCF first. See, always look for a common factor. And as we said before, you want to check to see if there's more factoring you can do before you stop. Do not stop until the polynomial is fully factored. And make sure you practice more as much as it takes on these skills. You can just Google all the, the, the skills that I listed and you can find ample unlimited practice on Khan Academy, Delta Math, CUDA software worksheets, and even OpenStax textbooks. So please, please, please practice more than just what I'm giving you in this video. Now, can you do every single thing that we just talked about either on Desmos or an expensive CAS calculator? Like the TI Inspire CX2 CAS? Yeah, you can. <laughs> But here's the thing, right? If you don't learn how to do this now, you're going to be in big trouble later when you take Algebra 2, when you take Pre-Calculus, when you take Calculus, when you take higher level math. You're, and even, too, on exams, like the AP Pre-Calculus exam and the AP Calculus exam, those both have no calculator sections. So... You're going to have to learn it eventually. You might as well learn now. So don't kick the can down the road because it, it could come back to bite you. Okay, so it's time for the final review. 
Remember to download the free final review worksheet using the link in the description. Try to complete the worksheet yourself before watching the rest of the video. And be on the lookout for a pinned comment with more helpful links about today's topic. Let's switch to the whiteboard for the final review. Okay, let's get started here. All right, so we have to add to this, which remember the coefficient in front of x that we don't write is one, so that's positive one. And it has to multiply to negative 56. So now I gotta come up with the two numbers The two numbers are eight and negative seven. Eight plus negative seven is one. Eight times negative seven is negative 56. So we write x plus eight, x minus seven equals zero. Now to find the solutions, we're gonna use the zero product property. So the two factors are x plus eight and x minus seven. So we do x plus eight equals zero. Subtract eight from both sides, we get x equals negative eight and x minus seven equals zero. Add seven to both sides and we get x equals seven. Great, let's move on. Okay, for this one, we're gonna pull out a GCF. I'm noticing that they all have x's. They actually all have, the greatest power of x that they all have is two. So we're gonna pull out an x to the two. And I'm also noticing that they're all divisible by five. So we're going to pull out a five as well. Now, if we divide each of those by five, we get x squared minus nine x. Uh, what's 70 divided by five? Plus 14. And now we're gonna factor um, using a equals one. So let's do that, like over here or something. So they have to add to negative nine multiply to 14, uh, the two numbers are negative seven and negative two, add to negative nine, multiply to positive 14. Good, so we make this five x squared, x minus seven and x minus two. And now we're gonna look at each of the factors. So th this can't be equal to zero, so I don't really care about him. We have x, we have x minus seven, don't care about the exponents. And we have x minus two. So x is equal to zero. Okay, that's a solution. Um, x minus seven equals zero. Add seven to both sides, we get x equals seven. And this one we do x minus two equals zero. We add two to both sides and we get x equals two. Okay, looks good, let's keep going. Okay, this one, um, we've got a quadratic equation, we've got a three, but we can't pull out the three because 17 and 20 are not divisible by three. So we're gonna do the AC method. So, um, let's see, so um, A is three, B is negative 17, and C is 20. So we're gonna put uh, add and multiply. So it's gonna add to negative 17. And then 20 times three is 60. So it's gonna multiply to 60. And I'm trying to think of ways to get negative 17. They both have to be negative. So negative six times negative 10. No, let me see. Yep, they're, um,
negative 5 and negative 12. Add to negative 17, multiply to 60. Good. Okay, so we're going to write 3x squared, split it up. So minus 5x minus 12x plus 20. And now we do factor by grouping. So I pull out an x and I get 3x minus 5. And now over here, I'm going to pull out a negative 4. And that will give me 3x minus 5. And we put our factors together. So we get x minus 4 and 3x minus 5. So we see this guy is good, but this guy is not. X plus four, it's X minus four. So, um, so the fact, so the answer should be one only, which is just A. Okay, great, let's keep going. Okay, we're gonna plot a GCF. Um, they don't both have any they don't both have a four, but they both have a two. And they highest they don't both have x's, so we're not gonna pull out an x. They both have y's. The highest power of y they both have is two y squared. So we're gonna pull out two y squared. And we're left with four x cubed. Four x cubed. And then y ninth divided by y squared is y to the seventh. And then 30 divided by 2 is 15. And then the y squareds go away. So it should be 2y squared, 4x cubed, y to the seventh, minus 15. Uh, that is answer choice C. Great, let's keep going. Okay, so everybody see these questions and they go, what the heck is this? What the heck is this? It just wants you to factor. It, it, if it mentions factors and it asks you about a factor, chances are it wants you to factor. So, so don't worry about figuring out what it's asking. Just do, just factor it and then see if the answer becomes clear, right? So very first thing is um, I'm gonna pull out, they all have a three and they all have X to the power one. So I'm gonna pull out a three X. And I'm left with 2x squared minus, let's write this all out. Threes go away, x squared over x is just x. Negative 3x over 3x is just one. So we're gonna put minus one. And now we're gonna do, unfortunately we're gonna do the AC method on that guy in the parentheses, so. Okay, so it's got to add to negative one and multiply to two times negative one, which is negative two. So we should have negative two and one. Negative two plus one is negative one and then negative two times one is negative two, good. So now we're gonna do three X um, and then um, this guy is going to get breaking up into minus 2x and then plus 1x or just x. And we do factor by grouping. And the uh, we pull out a 2x and we're left with x minus 1. And then that guy doesn't have anything, so we're going to pull out either 1 or negative 1. Let's pull out 1. And we're left with x minus 1. Seems like we made a good decision there. And that gives us the 1 factor is 2x plus 1 from here. And then the other factor is this guy which is x minus one. Okay, so now you see, A 
ax plus b. They're talking about this factor. So a is 2 and b is 1. So let's jot that down off to the side. So now we can just plug that into a plus 5b. So that's 2 plus 5 times 1, which is just 7. So the answer to this question is 7. So you see, if you just look at it and go, well, I don't know what this is asking me, and just kind of give up, that's not, that's not really going to work. You need to factor it and then just have really good factoring skills and then go back to the question and try to figure out what it's asking. You can't figure out what it's asking at the beginning. You can only figure out what it's asking once you've factored it. And again, key word that we had to do that was, look, it says factors. And it wrote a factor. And it gave us a polynomial. All right, let's move on. Okay, first things first. I notice I have a GCF. I'm gonna pull out seven and I'm left with x squared minus nine. Difference of two squares, x plus three, x minus three. So that's the answer for that one. Seven times x plus three times x minus three. This one looks like a perfect square trinomial. I see a minus sign here. So we're gonna do a minus b squared. a squared minus two ab plus b squared. And let's see, a squared is x to the eight, square root of x to the eight. Remember guys, just divide the exponent by two. Um, a is equal to x to the fourth. b is equal to, square root of all that is five, and then y to the fourth divided by two is y squared. Good, now we check the middle term. So 2ab, I get 5x to the fourth y squared. No, I forgot to multiply by 2. It's 2 times 5, so it's 10x to the fourth y squared. Great, that's what we got. So that looks good. So this is indeed a perfect square trinomial. So we just have to put it into a minus b squared. So x to the fourth minus 5y squared. And then that whole thing squared, that's our factored form for seven. Great. Okay, this one, I see a double exponent and a constant. So this is a factoring and quadratic form problem. So we're gonna underline this guy, set up our parentheses with x to the nine. And then we're gonna come up with um, two numbers that add to eight and multiply to negative 48. And let's see, what are those two numbers? I think they're 12 and negative four. So those add to eight, multiply to negative 48. And so we're gonna put x to the ninth plus 12 and x to the nine minus four. Great, let me do a quick check. Are either of these perfect squares? Hmm, this looks like a perfect square with a difference. And this looks like a minus, but x to the nine is not a perfect square because it's not, the exponent's not divisible by two. So we can stop there. Great, okay, what the heck is going on with this one? Okay, I think this is a difference of two squares. The square roots of 256 is 16, x to the fourth, that's x squared. And then b is, the square root of 625 is 25, and y to the fourth, that's y squared. So we're gonna do 16x squared plus 25y squared times 16x squared minus 25y squared, a plus b times a minus b. 
And now, oh wait, I see we have another difference of two squares. So I'm gonna do this again, but this time with a equals four x and b equals five y. So we're gonna rewrite this guy. And we're gonna do four x plus five y times four x minus five y. So you see guys, we had to do that like two difference of two squares. Great, okay, one more question. <sighs> okay, this is a tricky one. Um, there's a couple ways to go about doing this, but my first instinct is to do quadratic form. So I'm gonna underline this and it has to add to negative 18 and multiply to 81. The two numbers are minus nine and minus nine. So I'm gonna write x squared minus nine, x squared minus nine. So when we multiply something with the same base, what we can do is we can keep the base and add the exponents. That's what rules of exponents tells us, right? So this is really x squared minus nine squared. So right away, two is looking pretty good, but let's see if we can factor this further. So remember um, um, x squared minus nine is, that's a difference of two squares. I think we even did that one already. It's x plus three, x minus three, but remember the whole thing is squared. So rules of exponents tells us when we have a product or quotient, we can distribute the exponent. And we get x plus three squared, x minus three squared, which is Roman numeral one. So that one looks good too. And we can go with C, one and two. Very tricky question. Um, we had to know a little bit of rules of exponents and we had to know how to do one, two, or three, depending on which ones you choose, types of factoring. Okay, great. Let's go back to the slides. Okay, everyone, thank you so much for watching my video. I really appreciate you if you stuck around this entire time till the end. Comment below your thoughts on the video and worksheet. Did you find them helpful? Like the video and subscribe for more digital SAT math content. And if you need to, if you need tutoring, my website is linked in the description. I tutor SAT math and all, sub, all math subjects from about seventh grade to AP slash early college level. Thanks for stopping by and good luck studying.